The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Hey guys, I'm Kinsey from the I Love You So Much podcast. On my show, we talk about everything, lifestyle, business, finance, beauty, you name it. My favorite part about the show is the amazing guests that we bring on. We have everyone ranging from like business experts to influencers, CEOs, creative masterminds. It's so much fun. If you guys want to find me on Instagram, it's just at Kinsey Elizabeth. I release new episodes every Thursday, so hope to see you there. Girl, hey, welcome back to another episode of my weekly podcast, Taste of Taylor. I'm your host, Taylor Strecker, and joining me right now, I think this might be his first time ever. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Taylor. Hey, Daddy, hey. Taylor, am I going to regret this? (laughs) Well, the good news is it's not live. Also, your girlfriend, my wife, soon to be wife, is editing this, so you're in very good hands. Okay. If you do something really naughty beyond repair, that's on you, my friend. Okay. So you have mom sitting on your lap right now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was your girlfriend. <laughs> she is my girlfriend. <laughs> well, I'm a girlfriend. Well, tell the truth, though. I know mom's oh, you your mean favorite. Teddy's my girlfriend? Teddy's your girlfriend, not me, Dad. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm about love the one you're closest to. And right now, it's my wife, Babsy, on my lap. <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Dad, thank you for joining me on this podcast. It's lo- a long overdue, my friend, long overdue. I know that, Taylor. <laughs> That's called your dad. <laughs> Am I nervous? You know what? Wait, wait. Can I tell you a story? So what? Emma Willman, you know Emma on my radio show, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So Emma is a comedian. So she's always like in, at like comedy clubs and things like that. She's, so fr- she, she's from Maine. She is from Maine. So Emma, do you listen to the radio show, Dad? I went to see her on, on live uh, uh, live uh, comedy club in Boston. Right. But do you listen to the radio show? I asked you. Occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah. Okay. When, when mommy has it on. Okay, okay that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So Emma was at a comedy club and Amy Schumer was there. Do you know who Amy Schumer is? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Emma, she was like sitting there. Amy was eating like tater tots and being like a normal person. And Emma was kind of like starstruck a little bit. So she sat down at the table and she was like playing it cool and like, you know, talking to everybody and just like being like, be, be cool. It's just Amy Schumer. She's just a person. Don't act like a dork. And then Amy Schumer was like this. Hey, uh, Emma, and like shook her hand. She goes, Amy Schumer, nice to meet you. <laughs> and Emma shook her hand and went like this. I'm Amy Schumer. <laughs> <laughs> so she call said, me dad all you want. <laughs> she, was, she was thinking, I wish I was Amy Schumer. <laughs> <laughs> we all wish we were Amy Schumer. So dad, no, I mean, dad, the last time Taylor, I was what? I wish I was your dad. <laughs> I am your dad. <laughs> okay. So, Dad, I know you say you get You're shy. You edit that out, right? No. <laughs> that in. Dad, I know that you say you get shy, but the last time I was home, I did like a thing for the Patreon, for the VIP tier, yeah. and it was supposed to be just me and Mom doing like a live answering questions, and somebody wanted to come on the shot and show everybody their golf swing, and you like crashed it, and you were a star. So th- you have arrived now, sir. If you want to show off on Patreon, you got to come over on Taste of Taylor and show me what you got. All right, I'm here. Okay, so um, I want to talk about a lot of things with you. I want to talk about the wedding. Okay. I want to talk about what an amazing child I am. What? <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you want me to lie? Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, Dad, last how, time... Now, how much you pay me to do this? Zero dollars. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. It's already about the money, honey. <laughs> That's what this episode should be called. Um, I do want to say, though, Dad, I really... I do feel you in the money department. I was just so... This is airing after our wedding, but we are recording before the wedding. So as of the time of this recording, we are like three or four days out from the wedding. So we are pulling last minute things together. Yesterday, you tortured me in the yard. You made me do yard work with you. Yes. Yes. Were you proud of me? Very. Am I, out of all of your three children, who's the best gardener after yesterday? You. Really? Yeah, because Zach hates it. Out of all of your three children, whenever who's I, ever been in the yard whenever helping I ask you Zach take? to help me, he runs away. <laughs> he has to eyes. study. <laughs> well, I now equate all things flower related with punishment, not because of what I did with you yesterday. I actually quite enjoyed gardening with you. It was like some good father daughter bonding time. 
I felt like, you know, strong and like I was working out for the first time in six years. But I will say I, I was just dealing with the flowers for the wedding. Yeah. And it's a racket, my friend. I'm over here feeling like George Banks, who I know is your doppelganger. It's like your favorite person on the face of the planet, right? Identify with him. Yes, you do. Yeah. He is my alter ego. <laughs> so he's now my alter ego <laughs> because I would also like the chipper chicken. That's me. For the first time in my life, I really, really understand you, Dad, when it comes to money stuff. That's good. I'm mad at my kids already because they're going to steal my girlfriend and they're going to take all my money. And they're never going to say thank you. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do get you, don't I? Yeah. So I just want to say, Dad, I'm sorry. I stole your girlfriend and always do when I come home to visit. And I'm sorry that I took all your money. And yeah. I owe you about a million dollars. So when I'm <laughs> old and pooping in my pants, yeah. you'll take care of me. I promise I will. Okay, then now, now everything's all good then. I really do. We're even, Stevens. <laughs> You're praying I just drop dead before that happens. <laughs> I mean, I'll gladly take care of you. I really, I have to say, when I was a straight person. Taylor, if I'm, if I'm pooping <laughs> in my pants and I'm babbling, yeah. just take me out to the woods and leave me. Let the animals no, I will tag not. me. I will not. <laughs> yes. I'll wipe your diaper. I'll take no. such good care of you, I Dad. Even, I won't even know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, Dad, I have to say. Oh, what's with this cute little doggy? Why is he growling at me? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Why is he biting me? <laughs> <laughs> so dad, what? um, I, when I was a straight person, I just like totally, I, I have to say it really, it, I gained perspective in the last six years being with Teddy. And I just think that you should know that I'm sorry. I was such a brat for so many years. You weren't a brat. I wasn't. No. Really? You're a perfect child. Dad, don't lie. Dad, I, I didn't co you didn't come here to lie. Tell the truth. <laughs> oh, in high school, you were a little difficult. I was difficult in high school. But in college, you were fine. I was? Yeah, you were only bad for like four years. Well, that's not terrible in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, so you were a tough teenager, but then you were... Uh, yeah, you, you were fine after that. Well, I just... I mean, for example, so you and mom paid for my college tuition, which... No, we didn't. You did too. No. <laughs> Surprised you did. <laughs> oh, we did. But not, uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm FYI, thi my mom pays all the bills in this family, in case you couldn't tell from that statement. Dad, dad, well, in, what I was bakes thinking the bread was, and mom slices so it. So we, we had this situation where we were going to have you guys contribute 10% of your college tuition. Um, yeah, I remember that because our babysitter, Emily, she, I was like, shut up. When she was telling you guys, she was like, yeah, because she was babysitting all weekend. You guys were like, wow, you're so responsible. You babysit every weekend. She said, well, I have to pay 10% of my college tuition for every single semester. And the second she said it, I saw dad, George Banks said, it was like chipper chicken. That tuxedo no. is not the blue, babe. No, because. I saw it in your eye. I saw her, it. Because her dad realized that for the kids to appreciate what it costs yep. them yeah. to send their kids to college. That they could pay it a percentage. The kids have to pay a certain percentage because, so your tuition was 25000 You had to come up with 2500 oh, somebody does remember. Oh, yeah. I don't even so remember. So you had to come up with 2500 which was your t which was your scholarship you got. Yes, I did because I was so academically over a chip. Yeah. 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 I think I was lucky to have you. Oh, thank you. So, so because at of the time, so I said to time. you, if you can maintain your scholarship for four years, that's your 10% and that will be, that will cover you and you won't have to have actually paid us any real money. Exactly. So I remember that. That was your idea. I thought but that was in my Mom's mind, idea. you paid your way, you paid your, 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 your portion. Just to let you know, thank you for that. But yeah. I partied my face off and truly. But you maintain your GPA and so you maintain your scholarship for four years. So that was good enough. So that was like a job. But I will that say, was a job. I really, I don't know that I've ever formally thanked you for that because that is like such a gift I now understand. I mean, growing up in a place like Cohasset, it's a wealthy town. So you're around a lot of other wealthy, spoiled kids. So it's very easy to like lose perspective. For example, I had mom's uh, hand me down. Volvo, which is a great car. It's an automatic. It has windows that go up and down. It had a sunroof. I was living in a lap of luxury. And then I got in a car accident on the way to my private all-girl Catholic high school. And um, I totaled the car. And I thought, yes! Now that I told the car, I can get a Jeep. 
And I came home and you were mom were like, you don't get a Jeep. Now they told the tar, the, the car dum dum. You were like, now your insurance goes up, which means you can't afford to drive a car, which means you don't get a car. We're not getting you a Jeep. We're not rewarding you for getting to a car accident with a better, newer car. I didn't understand that. And I was so angry. And then I went and I bought my friend. Remember my friend Liz? I bought her $700. For $700, I bought her Toyota Tercel. It was blueberry blue. It was two door. It was vinyl. It barely had a muffler. It was like a muffler. A muffler. Is it called mufflers? Because we call mom's mom muffler. I always want to call it a muffler. Okay. And it sounded like it was basically a glorified go-kart. And a stick shift. I did not know how to drive stick. I tried to learn on your Audi, but I almost dropped the transmission out. So you said I couldn't learn on it anymore. Fair enough. But I will say that, you know, that was a brat move. Like I, I saw that my friends... They got in car accidents and then they got nicer cars. And so that's what I thought it was. This, it was kind of like the same thing with college tuition. It was like, oh, everyone's like, they just get their college tuition paid for. But I now have perspective and realize that's actually not the case. And so many of my friends have student loan debts. And I, like, it's not lost to me. While you were paying for my college tuition, you were still probably paying off your medical school debts. In college. And college. Because you paid your whole way through both. Right. Damn. Yeah. So explain this but, to me. But things were less expensive back then, but still. I guess, but, but explain this to me. So when you have kids, you just want, want to give them your money? You don't even think about that. You don't even think about it? No, you don't. You don't the, 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 the key in life is don't think too far ahead. Okay. Live in the moment. <laughs> You'll be happier. <laughs> well, real talk. It's like ignorance is bliss. Mom's like <clears throat> Tay. Teddy. Yeah. And I'm like you. I've now realized. Yeah. I always said jokingly, I want to marry my mom when I grew up. I literally have. She's mom right. to a T. Yeah. So <clears throat> if I'm like you, so I know mom wanted babies like right. Like you guys got married when you were seniors in college. Yes. You were. Well, I was grad. I graduated. You were a year ahead and you were in medical school. No, I was working as an EMT. Oh shit. Really? Yeah. I was living with my mother. And Melrose. Luxury. And mommy was at BC, Boston College. Yeah. And I would drive my old rickety car. What kind of car? Toyota Tercel? Uh, Blueberry some, Blue? Some junker that Billy ran. And I would drive from Melrose to Chestnut Hill. Right. To visit with her. And uh -huh. I would drive back to, to be with my mother in Melrose. Because at the which time. Which is why we got married within six months of me graduating. <laughs> and she was still a... A senior at BC because it was like that's crazy. We cannot continue doing this. No, it's too hard. So we just got married. Damn. Halfway through her senior year. Babies. Twenty one. Wait, tell me the story again. How you and mom met? <laughs> All right. So I was I was back in the first day back my sophomore year in college. Okay. And you were where? At Harvard. At Harvard. I told you guys. And I talked to an upperclassman mm -hmm. who I knew from my high school. I said, where do you meet girls here? And just real quick. So dad went to Harvard, right? Like still when Radcliffe existed. Right. So it was co-ed, but like brand new co-ed. Well, Harvard and Radcliffe had merged, but Radcliffe had its own admissions committee. Got it. And Harvard had was admissions for just guys. Right. And Radcliffe was a much smaller school. So they had m much, they had very few women who entered that, my class. Right. Because they stayed the same size as they were before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now it's 50-50 admissions, and now it's all one school. Right. And Radcliffe is, doesn't really exist. But back then, there were very few Radcliffe women. And so my freshman year was going to parties with one girl to 20 guys. <laughs> and Not fun the odds. girls weren't always the cutest in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really, it was pretty slim pickings. Uh -huh. So it's a lot of guys drinking and talking about and not, not, sports. Not much smooching. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted to get your smooch on. I want to get my smooching. <laughs> <laughs> so you said to your friend. So, so I asked the cla upperclassman my first day back my sophomore year. Uh -huh. I said, Will you meet girls? Just any. In this town. Because <laughs> he was a senior. He, I feel like he must know something. And he said? He said, go to Boston College. Really? All the cute girls go to Boston College? So that was a Thursday night. So my roommate and I jumped on the red line train. Yep. 
to Park Street, took a Green Line trolley. Oh, it's it's a it's a hike on public transportation to get from Cambridge. To Chestnut to Hill. Chestnut Hill. Took us probably an hour and a half one way. <laughs> and we got there on a Thursday night without knowing anything and just started wandering the campus. Uh huh. And figured, well, there's got to be a party somewhere. Right. Because back then, you could drink at age 18. Right. Uh, so it wasn't like it is now. Right. So there was always, was always a party. Right. And BC had already started. We, had, we were one day back. They were already like three weeks back. Okay. So I figured they're already ramped up. And, they're in the full swing of things. Yeah, and it's almost a weekend, so we're going to probably find something. Yeah. So we wandered around, and we found this place where all these people were waiting to get in. So uh-huh. we figured... That, Bar. Look, that looks promising. Right. So we just jumped in the line, and we were in line probably for another half an hour to get in. Uh-huh. And we we're at the very end of the so line. So now we're, like, committed. You're, like, two, at least two hours in. I got, like, two and a half hours in. Right. This. Right. So we get to the front of the line, and the guy says, show me your IDs. So you take out your ID? So we took out our college ID, and the guy goes, uh, you don't go to BC? We said, no. He goes, Harvard IDs don't work here. Only BC. <laughs> BC IDs only. Shit. This is a campus bar. So did you take and no you for an answer? you school here, so you can't come in. Did you fight him? So I said, I tried to talk my way in. He how, wouldn't, how? He wouldn't accept it. How? I said, we're the last people in line. <laughs> you know, no one else is here. Come we're on. We're college students. We just want to meet some good citizens. <laughs> and we want to smooch. <laughs> 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 this episode of Taste of Taylor is brought to you by Con Air. I'm so excited to be working with Con Air on this podcast because your girl is terrible at doing her own hair. That was until I got this product from Con Air and it's life changing. If I can do my hair now, trust me, anybody can. If you want big, beautiful, effortless waves just in time for back to school, I got the thing for you. It's the Conair Double Ceramic Waver, okay? It's designed with not just one, but three barrels for deep, continuous waves. Plus, the double ceramic technology provides even and consistent heating, fast styling, and long-lasting waves. Plus, the double ceramic technology provides even and consistent heat, fast styling, and long-lasting waves. With instant heat up, 30 heat settings for every hair type, that's amazing, and turbo heat boost for those difficult-to-style spots, it's easy to get those waves that you totally crave. And the wide range of heat options lets you customize styling for flawless results so you can be back to school beautiful. With full flowing waves now so quick and easy to create at home, you'll always be selfie ready on campus and off. Skip the salon and save time. Big, beautiful waves at home. No salon appointment needed. What's not to love? I'm obsessed. Get your waiver delivered to your door just in time for back to school. Ordering this back to school essential for beautiful bombshell waves is super easy to order. Just go to conair.com and search waiver. Again, just go to conair, C-O-N-A-I-R.com and search waiver, W-A-V-E-R. I'm telling you, game changer. And now back to the podcast. <laughs> okay. So it didn't work. And he didn't, <laughs> he didn't give a shit. No. Okay. So I said to my roommate, we're going to get into this place. Oh, what? Yeah. I'll tell you this. Don't ever say no to Richard Strecker because he was like, he is stubborn as a mule, right? I was, I was committed. I am you. Because the second you tell me no, I'm like, I am making this happen. Right. Yep. That's a rebellious streak in us. Okay. So. So we start walking around the building. Perseverance, people. And I found there was a fire escape in the back. Okay. So I said, oh, that's how we're going to get in. So I gave my roommate 10 fingers. Okay. He reached up, pulled the ladder down. Okay. We climbed up the ladder, went up the fire escape, found an open window, climbed in, and then we heard these people being chased and yelling. So we jumped to this little, like a little meat locker kind of thing. No kidding. Yeah. But then I was saying, shit, what if someone closes the door? Oh, my God. So we stayed in there long. (laughs) And then we just started walking up the stairs till we hit the music. Right. And we walked, opened this door, and was standing behind the bar uh-huh. of this establishment, BC establishment. Right. And the guys, so all the bartenders were there, and all the bartenders were these BC football players. Oh my, so they're huge. They were these monster guys. <laughs> and we went, I went, oh shit. We were going to get wrapped. <laughs> so I jumped, we jumped under the bar, into the crowd. Were they like, hey, hey, or and I was, no? And I was, well, we just, we just saw them and just ran into the crowd. Okay. So I was waiting for these, one of these guys to grab me and drag me out by my neck. Right. 
and say, hey, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and no one grabbed us. <laughs> so we were Victory. in. Victory. So we got in. Yes. So I said to my roommate, man, we, we did it. We're going to be smooching. We're going to be smooching tonight, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> what a dork. Okay, continue. Okay, so you get in. So you're in. Like, already this is a great story. And you're like, we're going to have the best night ever because we just, like, go, I mean, you're three hours in. You just snuck through all these terrifying big BC boys. So then how'd you find mom? So then I'm just kind of scanning the crowd. I said to my roommate, I said, you know what? I'm feeling really lucky tonight. Yeah. I'm going to go for gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I start, I scan the room for the cutest girl I could find. Yeah, and there's a lot of cute ones at BC, no? Yeah. Yeah. I saw this one girl really tan. Really tan. Blonde. Blonde. And I said, Like a Ooh. unicorn in Massachusetts, yeah, she right? Just, she just stood out in the crowd. That's mom. So I looked at her and I went, that's the one. I'm dead. Continue. More. I need more. Don't stop. So... She came over to where I was. She came over to you? No, she kind of wandered Don't around. lie to me. Kinda, you're too, tell me the truth. No, she was just wand, she was, she was wandered toward my side. She wandered toward I didn't, your side. I didn't, like, attack her. I just kind of <laughs> Good. Kinda played it cool. <laughs> okay, okay. And then when she sort of wandered, you know, in my direction, I went over to her and I said, hey, would you like to dance? Oh, I'm, stop! And she said to me, no, maybe later. <laughs> How did you feel now? So moment? I walked away and said, well, that wasn't no. <laughs> I like the attitude. Okay. Okay. So I felt hopeful. Oh, man. and we have a question in the interim, because I feel like it's like guys, when I was dating in college, for sure, definitely guys. Now there's a term I'm going to tell you. Don't get mad at me. I have to swear to tell you. Okay. I won't swear. I'll just say the F word. Like I'll, I'll say F. They're called F boys, but like, it's like F U C K, but F boys, that's a terminology. So, you know, there's always derogatory terms for women, right? That men have over the years have used to put women down. Well, finally women have one for men and it's called an F boy. So an F boy in that situation, dad would have found another girl to definitely like shamelessly flirt with in front of mom to get mom to get jealous and be like, I need, I, I got all the chicks, but you're no F boy. Are you dad? No, you're not. So I went and wandered around. I, I, knew, I knew some of the, the guys in the crowd. So I just started talking to them. How'd you know them? Because I live in Boston and these, this is BC. And I oh, knows. really? I didn't know this. Okay. Yeah, so I knew some of the oh, guys. Oh, so you're I knew, like. I knew some people there. Cool cat. Just a so Boston was, boy so hanging I, with his Boston I said, pals. Oh, I know that guy. So I went over and talked to see people. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay. So then. So you're literally in your mind, you're like, I'm just going to wait for that blonde so lady to so come I'm over. So I'm watching her. She's dancing with some other guy. So she, she stops dancing with him and she comes over to the side, talks to her, her friend. Patty. 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 Oh my God. I'm, I can't. Aunt Patty. Okay. It was one of her co high school friends. Yeah. Who was at BC with her. Oh yeah. I forgot they went to BC <clears throat> together in high school too. So I went over and she's talking to Patty. So she wasn't with this guy anymore. Yeah. So I you said. So I'm thinking, she just danced with this guy. They're not like a couple. Yeah. So she's so my guess, turn. It's my, it's, this is my time to make my move. Yeah. You to know? get a what? Because the guy's away. To get a. He's kind of, he gave me an opening. Yeah. And I'm taking it. Yeah. So uh, if he was going to really protect his girlfriend, he would not leave her. He left her. Because she was a hottie. Yeah. You don't leave a hottie <laughs> with a body alone like that. Okay. So. So I went over to her again. And I said, would you like to dance? And she said. No, don't look at her. I don't want, no, don't look at her. I do, do you, you use your brain. And she said. And she said, well, you know what? This was. This Dad. Was, it's a part I forgot. What? Go talk close to the microphone. The first time, the first time I said, uh, would you like to dance? She said, maybe later. Yes. And then Patty, her friend said, okay. said to her, who is that guy? And she said, just some random guy. She goes, oh, he was cute. Nice, Patty. So, nice. So I'm giving Patty. Thanks, cred, Patty. Credit on that. Great. So I went back the second time. She was with Patty. Thanks for thanks for already thank you for giving my life, me a little Aunt boost. Patty. I didn't even know the girl. Yep. But she's that's why she's one of my favorite favorite Babette friends. <laughs> you bet your ass. <laughs> if it wasn't she is. for Patty, I probably wouldn't have married you. And I wouldn't be alive. Continue. Yeah. Okay. So I asked her a second time, and, she, and Babette goes, "Okay." She said, "Okay." So we danced. What kind of dance do you do? Fast or slow? Fast. Do you do the pony? Do the pony. Do the pony. <laughs> do you do the disco? I don't, What's like, I don't know. I just was dancing. Do the bit, do the bit boo. <laughs> do the, do the bit boo. What's that song? Do the, do the hustle. Do you do the hustle? Boop, 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 
boop, boop, boop, boop, boop, boop. Is that what you did? Uh, I wasn't doing that, but I can you do like it. You're like Dirk Diggler dancing that. in the mirror, getting ready to go out to the discotheca. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so you so, danced? So a dancing. Scale of one to ten, how good of a dancer were you? Uh, uh, no, Dad. I was you. probably if I if Stop I was sober, I was probably a five. Yeah. If I was a little Lucy, a little drunk, I thought it was a ten. <laughs> I was a ten. <laughs> um, I have a question. Whether it's a ten or not, I have no idea. Did you do the bear dance for mom when, uh, the first no, night you met her? No, I didn't know. When did the bear about. dance come into existence? Probably after I was married. <laughs> yeah, the bear dance is a, I'm a married dance for sure. My that, bear that, dance is my favorite thing in the world. That's a dad dance. You're bear dancing at my wedding, okay? Again. I don't know if my knee can handle it. No, you've got to do it, Dad. It's All like right. it's like a family tradition at this point. Okay. Right. So. So anyway, so I, I danced with her a dance, and then this guy came over. Who was danced with her before? Yeah, and he tapped me out. He tapped because, you out because I, was, I, I, I wasn't like you, put me in a time machine, take me back into uh, a, a better day. I don't know what this tapping out thing is that you speak. Well, of. I kept dancing with her like one dance after another because I I had this girl and she, in my mind she was mine for the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but little did I know she had actually agreed to meet some guy from Fort Lauderdale beforehand and he was the guy who was she was dancing with at first oh she was on a date well not really a formal date but right. someone she kind of knew right so so she was so he, he came over out. and felt like well i was gonna be with this girl now, who's this random guy yeah so he taps me on the shoulder and a little of a dance so i would stop dancing with her so, he, so you, he could dance so with did you do it you stopped yeah because that's what you do how to make you that's, feel that's like old-fashioned stuff do you want to beat him up I was like, who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> she's my girl for the night. <laughs> my girl for the night. I love that. I keep thinking he's going to say girlfriend. He keeps saying, she's my girl for the night. Okay, so. My expectations were reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so? So then he tapped me out. So I'm like, okay. So, so what'd you do? So I walked to the side and I'm watching, watching him. And I'm going, all right, he can tap me out. I'll tap him out. Stop, I'm dead. <laughs> 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 I waited for him um, dancing, uh, like at least a dance and a half more. That's nice of you to share so well. I let him let him d- dance the rest of the song and another dance. And then he tapped him out and again. And I went and tapped him out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this went on like all night long. Quid pro quo, Clarice. So, Wait, you really did? You guys went back and forth tapping? Yeah, we, was, we were like... Nerds! We, we were tapping <laughs> each other all night long. Tap, tap, tap. Tippity tap, tap. Tippity tap, tap, tappy. Well, otherwise we could just like have a fight over her. Right. And have a brawl in the middle of the dance floor. You had a gentleman's duel. We were having a gentleman's <laughs> duel. It was the Ivy Leaguer against the Eagle. <laughs> nice, Dad. Cool. <laughs> it so, was the Harvard John against the Eagle. So what did so so hello? And then after all this tapping, your fingers about to fall off. By the way, tapping is my least favorite thing human beings do to you each tap other. Tap him on the shoulder. If someone tapped me that much, I would punch him in the face. I would have gotten to an altercation with somebody over yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so. So then, so it gets to be around 11 o'clock at night when the Green Line trolley ceases to run. Shoot. And I said, I, I, can, ha- I, I can hear, I, have to- I can hear my sperm living inside of your, sorry, dad, yeah. um, penis area screaming, dad, go back in. We have to get me made. It's just like back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's like back to the future, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> dad, you're, you're my ball sack. Oh. And you're screaming. So like, this is my sperm voice. <laughs> Dad, Dad, don't give up so easy. I want to live. I'm so special. <laughs> I'm going to get old. And I'm going to do podcasting. And I'm become a big life lesbian. So at 11 o'clock, I said to her, I have to leave because the train's leaving. Nice, Dad. And she said, okay. And she's thinking, what college kid <laughs> leaves the dance at 11 o'clock at night? Yeah, you I thought you were in high school, right? You were young looking. Well, I had a crew cut. So, I don't know what that means. Well, I, was, I wasn't very old anyway because I was... Eight. Because you're so smart that you skipped a bunch of grades. So, you were no, a I, sophomore. No, I started school really young because my mother wanted to get me out of the house. Oh, I, I, I've romanticized that differently in my head. Okay. Yeah, I think I started kindergarten when I was four. Holy shit, that's <laughs> young. It's supposed to be five. I still wore diapers, I believe, when I was four. I believe I made it by a month cut off. What? Yes. Yeah, so That's I, crazy. So okay. The, so, so you were young for your so year. I was always young for my grade. Right. 
I was a year younger than everyone else. So usually. you looked young. So you think mom thought you were in high school? So I was 18 as I was a sophomore in college. Jeez. Okay. But she's a freshman, so you're both 18. We were the same age. Right. Okay. So, and I had a crew cast, so looked really young. So? So she thought I was a high school kid that snuck in. So? So how'd so, you get it? How, so what'd you do? So I said, I said, well, I have to go, but uh, let's go to a Harvard football game next weekend. Nice. Way to drop the h on her <laughs> real fast. We all know, we all know, especially in the 70s, you're going to college too. Yes, you are getting education, but also you, it's, that's an MRS situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Harvard. I mean, Harvard's always Harvard. So she's really dealt with it's true. She thinks I'm lying to her. Of course. So she brings her roommate, Ellen. Oh, Ellen, yes. Dad, stop looking at her. Look at me and tell me the story. And um, as like a bodyguard. Yeah, that's fair. She's smart. She didn't quite trust I was telling her the truth. Well, and that's smart to bring a friend, especially, you know, if you think someone's lying to you. Okay, yes, go on. So we um, went to my dorm room which was not in a dorm setting it was called Clavelly Hall okay so was it didn't really necessarily look like a real dorm yeah Harvard has like different like like nice dorms right yeah like so this is across from Lowell House but it was like it didn't it could be an apartment okay so she still wasn't sure. So she still sure. thinks you're a creepy liar. She still wasn't sure. A creepy, young, weird Didn't, liar. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. <laughs> so, so then I started. We, we were drinking and went to the football game and had fun. And, 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 then, well, and then when you had to show ID to get into the football game, I'm assuming. Yeah. And so, I had tickets. So she knew. Yeah. That, Dad, yeah. you got to yeah. end. This is such a good story. You got to end strong. Yeah. She knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's ending strong. Well, but, wait. So when did you like, when you make her your girl? What the hell? Uh, so then we just kind of, uh, <laughs> then I, I would call her on Friday night and I would say, you want to go out tonight? And she would say. But like, did you guys have fun? Did you, when did you smooch? Probably smooch that one time. Which one time at the on BC or when, did you smooch? When Ellen, oh, well, I don't. I'm saying no. Her, not at the dance. Mom's saying no. No smooch in the dance. No, that was a no smoocher. Okay. And then, oh, I know what the next one was. The next smooch. The next time I saw her. Saw her was at a BC at a different BC dance. Okay, so you're just like a Harvard guy that crashes all the BC events. Continue. So I took it to the fo- football game. Oh, to- so so first the bar, then the football game. So then you yeah. proved that you actually were at Harvard. Right. Okay. And then, then she likes you. Well, then she was. Did she not? Then she, she did not like she, you. She thought I was not some high school kid. She trying didn't to think that it. you were a creepy, scary liar. Okay. Right. But she was like, do you, did you feel like she likes me, or did you feel like, oh, no, I don't I'm still know. working on it. Okay. Okay. I don't okay. Think I had a smooch yet. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Because the, the second date was with Ellen, and Ellen was kind of. a Cramping my style. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, those friends. They're real. So now I've got two, two days into this. Yes. But this girl's worth it, worth the effort. She is. Look at her. I mean, yeah. tan, she's, blonde, she's, adorable. She's cute. She's way cute. And she was, still wasn't saying no. Yeah. So that's mom. So that was this like, tracks. okay, I'm still in the running here. Okay. So then she said, there's going to be a dance at another BC dance at a different part of the campus. Okay. So I said to all my Harvard buddies, hey, let's go to another BC dance and we'll see all these cute BC girls. Right. Right. So I had, I brought in like eight, my buddies. Nice. And we were all waiting in line. And like cool say, Harvard guys or nerds? Uh, mix. Okay. That's fair. Mix. That tracks. So, so then, um, so we get, we wait in line, all of us. And the same thing happened again. We get to the front of the line and the guy said, you guys, your Harvard IDs don't work here. Good God. And so you can't come in. You said you're going to make me break so in So I started again? arguing with them. <laughs> and while I'm arguing with them, all my friends were sneaking in. Stop. Like they were focused on me and my friends were just like running in. <laughs> and so it came to the point where I was the only one left. No. And like about 10 of my friends are all uh, in there. Come and on. And I was outside. Like let me in. And I looked to the window because on the first floor. Uh-huh. And they could see me outside and they were all laughing at me oh, through and, the window. And this is all I remember. And then mom said she saw your little face. She saw me outside all, the all alone and she came out. <laughs> <laughs> she felt bad for me. Oh. So then I got my first smooch. Yo, nice dad. You yeah, deserved it. You like, deserved I recruited it. all these Harvard guys and I wasn't even going to get in. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and there was no fire escape because it was on the first floor. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> so that was when we first, she knew I was made a real effort. Oh. And she knew I was legit. 
right. college student. Yep. So she's, so then we started dating. And, oh, and then the rest is history. But you know one reason why she felt comfortable with me? Why? Because I was like so regular. <laughs> that is so not true. You are so special. No, my second date with her, Ellen, Babette, and I were taking turns spitting on a window to see who could spit the furthest. Romance is not So she dead. said, chivalry so is alive was, and well. You know, so I was like not intimidating to her. Got it. <laughs> and then you fell in love and then you we got did. married. We did. And then you had little old me. And now I'm getting married again. I know. What do you think of it, dad? <clears throat> Wonderful. Can you believe how old I am? Does that make you, how old? You're not old. Uh, You're half my age. Okay, that's fair. I'll keep you around, if not for any, for for nothing else, just to hear that. <laughs> and you see how hard I worked on Sunday with you digging holes. Yes. Yeah, you were impressed. I was impressed. So for a sixty-five-year-old guy, I'm pretty strong. Dad, you're doing. I was very impressed. I can work. I actually hope to be as like active as you and mom when I'm your age. You guys really are an inspiration. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> when I came home, mom said we call dad the um. What do we call mom? The foreman, because he likes to stand over all of us while we do tasks and tell us how to do the tasks. But I do them with him. No, I, you do. I, I do, you get, I do you, toil. Yeah, you do. Like you, I'm, I get sweaty, dirty, yeah, and, and bloody. You and I, you and I got uh, into the I'm plants. Not, I'm not afraid of hard work. So, you met mom, fell in love, you got married, and now it's coming full circle, and I'm getting married. And I mean, listen, I know I've been married before, but I feel like we all knew. It, that was not right. We knew that wasn't right, right? The first marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Yeah, I liked him. Yeah, I liked him too. He's fine. He's a likable guy. He's a likable guy. He's like a guy. guy's guy. He is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. No shade to husband. No. Now that I'm marrying Teddy, it's like a different, it's a different ball game, you know? This is oh, like. Yeah. It's a total, total package. Total package. Just tell everybody real quick why you love Teddy so much. You really do adore her. She's the best. Isn't she the best? Yeah. Why? She's my golf buddy. She's your golf buddy. Yeah. I'm your gardening buddy. You are my gardening buddy. Yeah, so that I'm... I, you but you've know. only done that once. Okay, I'll keep doing it with you. You gotta keep doing it. <laughs> it's, not, oh. it's not like a one and done. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I got roped into this. I, I want to be your golf buddy. You can drink when you golf. But when you dig holes, it, it's like going to the gym. It's yeah. good exercise. Yeah, okay, whatever. That's the only you thing that got me through. You can hardly get up this morning, right? <laughs> totally dying. Yeah, me too. I was totally, like, I hardly walk up the stairs totally last dying. night. <laughs> okay, so wait, right. you love Teddy because she's your golf buddy. Yeah. Why else? She's very sweet. She is very sweet. And she agrees with everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, say that's I, not true. She, to dad's heart. She, she's not, doesn't do that. She just very, has an even she's disposition. She's just very easy going. She does not confrontational. No, she's so easy to be around, isn't she? <clears throat> yeah. She just like, she makes she everything. She may think you're full of shit, but she won't tell you to your I don't, face. Honestly, I don't think Teddy, I don't she think. She just won't say anything. No, I, Teddy doesn't, Teddy genuinely doesn't think anyone's full of shit. She lives with rose colored glasses on. And really? I live, thanks to you, with poo colored glasses on. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. It's okay. I love you. I like who I am. I like who you are. We're just a little bit difficult. I'm really happy that we have each other though, so we can support each other through this crazy life. Oh God, yes. Because we're the only ones that get each other ultimately. I know. So we can just sit here and enable each other forever. Yes. But also I want to say thank you and mom for hosting our wedding. This is like the best thing in our the entire pleasure. world. We have this beautiful house and we would have been such, if we had never had a wedding or any a big event here. Nothing. It'd be such a waste. I know. It's like the most gorgeous place ever. So. Yeah. And we're going to be downsizing at some point. I know. Now that we get it all fixed up so pretty, it's going to be harder to do I know, that's what you do, do right? That. You buy a house, and then you fix it up, and then you, you make it perfect, and then you, have, then you sell it. Yeah, and then you say, oh, maybe I'll stay a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have to ask you, because, I mean, think about this. You are having a wedding of your first daughters at your house. Yeah. You are officially George Banks. I know. So are you as stressed out as George Banks and father of the bride? No. No. Thank God. Because we don't have swans and all that other <laughs> stuff here. That's what I said. Somebody was asking about it, and I was like, well, we don't have swans and shit, so <laughs> he's not as stressed out as George Banks was. No. But, Dad, uh, Father of the Bride's your favorite movie, and you cry at the end of it every single time you watch it, and you've watched it a thousand times. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to boohoo at the wedding? I don't know. <laughs> you think you're going to get emotional? 
If you run off and I don't get to say goodbye to you, I might. <laughs> I promise it won't happen. Tay and I just might spend our entire honeymoon here with you guys. It's fine with me. I know it's fine with you. We'll <clears> golf. <throat> you'll make me do the gardening work with you. It'll yeah, be a dream. Yeah, you'll be my gardening buddy. No, no. So, no, so that's Teddy not can be my golf buddy. No, that's not how and we're spending You're my gardening buddy. Honeymoon. That's we can not, go out there a weed together. That's not how we're spending the We can the spread honeymoon. malts together. No. We can put in... no. New Guinea impatience plants together. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Knock out roses together. It's a wedding at the steak pit and a honeymoon gardening with dad, right? We can saw off limbs on trees Ooh, together. Ooh, fun. I'll show you how to use my, uh, all my tree saw equipment. <laughs> oh, dad, stop. Stop it. You're getting me too excited. It's gonna, you're going to have like great arms. Oh, thank you. You're not going no. to have the girl waggle. You're going to have nice, firm arms. <laughs> Dad, I'm not spending the honeymoon doing yard work with you. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Well, thank you for joining me on the podcast, Dad. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. You did a good job, Dad. You're a good storyteller. You think? I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, also, in addition to thank you for the wedding, thank you for my Botox. You guys, if you were in the, I, w- I wish I could say tri-state area. We've been trying to get dad to New York. But if you are in uh, the South Shore of Massachusetts, you should come see my dad for Botox. Right, dad? Yeah. You are so good at Botox. Just look at my face. I am literally the Richard Strecker canvas. So Ever since she was 16. Ever since I was, yeah, 18. 18. Yeah, because I had the blinkies. Right. And so I started to come see you. <clears throat> well, you and my...